So how do we solve a first order linear differential equation? Let us go back to separable differential equation, review a little bit and write this step by step. So remember that when you have a separable differential equation, this differential equation is going to be of the form, for example, um, py dy equals to qx dx. You can separate dx and the terms and expressions in terms of x from dy and the terms and expressions in y. How to solve it? To solve this, if you have a separable differential equation, you're going to take the integral of both sides. So of course, you know, you have to do a lot of calculus, a lot of algebra to simplify what is acquired. So calculus and algebra. Now, what if you have a first order linear differential equation? So if you have a first order linear differential equation, it doesn't matter if it's homogeneous or non-homogeneous, the steps are the same. So in general, we can write it this way, a sub one x y prime plus a sub zero x y equals to, well, I have a function in x, it might be a constant. If it's homogeneous, it's going to be zero. How do we solve it? We have to take some steps. These steps are preparation before taking the integral for this type of differential equations. So how to solve this? Step one, you have to take these steps. First, divide everything, left-hand side and right-hand side, by a sub one of x. What's the meaning of that? It means that we try to make the leading coefficient to be equal to one. So divide both sides. It means that everything that you have by a sub one x, we get something like this. So if you divide a one x by a one x, you're going to get y prime back plus a sub zero divided by a sub one. Suppose you can rename it and have something like P of X multiplied by Y equals to GX divided by a sub one of X. Let us just recall it as, for example, Q of X. So we wrote down the first order linear differential equation in standard form. So remember the name, the standard form of first order linear differential equation. Standard form. Well, what's the next step? In step two, find the integrating factor. Step two, find the integrating factor. Well, What's integrating factor? The integrating factor in this case is e to power integral px dx. So step one, first write your first order linear differential equation in its standard form. In step two, find the integrating factor, which is e to power integral px dx. In step three, multiply your standard first order linear differential equation by the integrating factor. So step three, multiply both sides of the standard form. by the integrating factor. Step three, now step four. In step four, you can see left-hand side becomes the left 
left-hand side becomes the derivative of the integrating factor times y. And on the right-hand side, you're going to have qx times the integrating factor. Now, take the integral of both sides. Step five, take the integral of both sides in step four. Give us an example. So I'm going to leave these steps here. We're going to follow these. So here we have, so far we learned about a separable differential equation. These are the classifications that you need to know. So, separable, then linear first order. So when you have a first order linear differential equation, these are the steps that you have to take to solve it. Example, in the note, page two, We have the following question says, well, solve dy over dx minus 3y equal to zero. So when you're solving a differential equation, you have, you might end up having different methods solving it. For example, take a look at this differential equation. The very first thing, that you should be asking is, is it separable? If it's separable, so I can easily apply the method that I learned for a separable differential equation and solve it. You don't have to go through the linear first order differential equation method and solve it. So I'm going to solve this using separable differential equation and also apply the method that it presented for a first order linear differential equation and show you we get the exact same result. Is this separable? Well, here you have dy over dx equals to 3y. I can rewrite this using algebra. So here you get dy over y equals to 3 dx. Now take the integral of both sides. What are you going to get? You're going to get ln of absolute value of y equals to 3x plus c. So let me just put this in box to avoid any confusion. So what's the meaning of that? It means that absolute value of y is equal to e to the power 3x plus c, or absolute value of y is equal to e to power c, e to power 3x. So y is equal to plus minus e to power c, e to 3x or y is equal to k e to 3x. We found explicit solution, family of solutions of this differential equation. Now, this is for being separable. I say, hey, can I apply the method that I learned for a linear differential equation here? Okay, is this a linear differential equation? So, can we apply the method for solving a linear ODE? So is this a linear differential equation? Take a look at this. Here you have y prime minus 3y equal to zero. Remember how we define a first order linear differential equation? It was a sub one x y prime plus 
a sub zero x y equals to well you have a function or a constant in x if it's zero then you call it homogeneous otherwise non-homogeneous in this case a sub one is equal to one a sub zero is negative three and gx is zero so you have a homogeneous differential equation of first order and it is linear okay so you might be interested in applying the methods of solving a linear first order differential equation first divide both sides by a sum 1x because our goal is to write it in standard form luckily for us it's already have one as the leading coefficient so you don't have to go through step one Step one, check. It is already in standard form. Step two, find the integrating factor. The integrating factor is E integral px what is px so since it's already in standard form here you already have your px and qx px is just negative three so negative three dx so what is the integrating factor it is e to power negative three x very well in step Three, we have to multiply everything by integrating factor. So here you get e to negative three x times y prime minus three e to negative three x y equal to zero times the integrating factor is equal to zero. So what do we see here? This guy says, well, I have the derivative of y times e to power negative 3x minus 3 e to power negative 3x times y. What is this? This is just the product rule inverse. So here you have the derivative of e to negative 3x times y. If you don't believe me, check it. If you apply product rule, you get the derivative of e to power negative three x, which is negative three e to negative three x times y plus the derivative of y times e to power negative three x y prime times e to power negative three x. So you're just doing the reverse operation equal to zero. So it says in step. So this is your step four. In step five. Take the integral of both sides. Okay, the integral of d dx of e2 negative 3x y is equal to the integral of zero. So what's left here on the left hand side, you can cancel out the integral and the derivative. You're left with e2. Let me write it here for you. So I need more space. You get e2 negative. 3x e times y equals to well here you have the integral of zero it means that you have just a constant like c so y is equal to c divided by e to power 3x or c e to 3x just compare your answer by solving this differential equation using the method that we learned for a linear first order differential equation and also the method that you applied for your differential equation since you recognize that is also separable differential equation as you can see sometimes using one method save us a lot of time but applying separable differential equation method I quickly just separate these two and then 
by taking the integral, I could find the family of solutions of differential equation. Here, I didn't recognize that it's a separable differential equation. And at the beginning, I said, hey, it's a standard first order linear differential equation. And they apply this method by finding the integrating factor, multiplying everything by the integrating factor, checking to see that, hey, I have the reverse of product rule written here. It's expanded form. I wrote it in a compact form. And then I took the integral. But eventually, the solutions that you have here and here, they must be the same. 